Hello, one and all. This is Luckless Lovelocks. Welcome back to Virtue's Last Reward. Let's continue. What did, what did I say? I thought it would be a good idea to talk to you about all this alone. Yeah. I agree. There's something else we need to do too, though. Find the number two bomb. Exactly. So we should get going. I'm pretty sure the bomb isn't in here. There's nowhere to hide it. I'm so curious to find out how this is going to end. So... You're saying we should go somewhere else. Yeah. Well, come on, don't just stand there. We need to get a move on. Without waiting for a reply, she turned and started toward one of the exits. I followed. Oh, okay. The archives. Okay, cool. The archives. Good place to hide a bomb. Now where the hell did we start looking? I doubt it really matters. If it's here, we'll find it eventually. So what about that Jupiter stuff? We can talk while we look. Now get started. Jeez, all right. Yes, ma'am. I turned to a corner of the room and began to look while Fi spoke. I'll start with the conclusion I've come to. Our consciousnesses seem to be able to jump through time. Okay, okay. No, sorry. Through time isn't really accurate. It's more like we move through worlds. Worlds, like dimensions? Yes. I don't mean physical planets in this case. Like different versions of the same events. Talking about a whole different universe, really. Parallel worlds. What? Do you know about the many worlds interpretation? Well, kind of? I think I've heard of it once or twice. Hmm. Oh, well... I'll just explain it. Of course you will. Let's say... Mm. I love these parts. It's always just like, here's some crazy shit, and now I'm just going to explain it to you. Have you heard of it? No. Okay, I'll explain it I to you. I don't care what it is, but could you move? Uh... Scratch your head, cross your arms, put your hands on your hips, anything? I had no idea what this was supposed to explain, but I did as she asked. Oh, what do I, what do I do? Scratch head, cross arm, put hands on hips. I'm gonna applaud because that's the one thing that she didn't suggest. Oh, there's others. Cheer, blow kiss, tap dance, moonwalk. Okay, oh man. Uh. Let's go tap dance. That's pretty freaking weird. The hell is that? <laughs> everyone, everyone who's watching is thinking the same thing. It's my tap dance sound. Wasn't it obvious? I was tap dancing. Uh, oh. Thought you were trying to kill a roach or something. Well, that too. Huh? Never mind. Anyway, you want to show me your incredible moves, right? Yeah, exactly. But you could have chosen to moonwalk or scratch your head. Aren't moonwalking and scratching your head kind of different? The details don't matter. I'm just talking about possibilities here. Now, maybe there are other Sigmas in other worlds who did all of those things. All of these worlds and realities are branching off from one another. The choices you could have made branched off from the moment you decided what you were going to do just now. Every moment you make a decision, another universe branches off, on and on into infinity. Each of those branches is an alternate world, a world where a version of you did something different. Haven't you ever thought about what life would have been like if you'd made different choices? What if you'd gone to this high school instead of that one? 
What if you hadn't started a study group? What if you hadn't told that girl you liked her? What if? What if? But are those what ifs really just what ifs? Or are there other worlds out there where you did those things? Anyway, that's the many worlds interpretation in a nutshell. I get it, I get it. I've simplified it a lot. Obviously. Doesn't have to be human actions though. I just used your actions to make the explanation easier to grasp. The actions of a cat, the flight of a bee, the movement of a microorganism, even fluctuations in air temperature. All these can change history. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second here. I'll let microorganisms slide, but there's no way that air is conscious of anything. Can you say for sure that you are? What? Air? All of your actions are caused by the cells in your brain. If we go down a little further, then you could say all of your actions are the result of atoms or electrons or smaller particles we haven't even discovered yet. Like quarks? Are those atoms and electrons still you making a decision? At that level, how different are you from the air? I'd say not much. Human existence is just one part of reality. I think she just called us an airhead, by the way. Falling in love is like a tulip blossoming. A tulip blossoming is like a tornado forming in South America. See what I'm saying? The only thing that really matters is the action of the most elementary particles of matter. That's where history happens. That's where universes branch out. Hey, you stopped. Are you done with that shelf? Oh, uh, no, not yet. Well, keep looking while I talk. How familiar are you with quantum physics? Here we go. Actually, I'm, I want her to explain this because I'm not that familiar with quantum physics. Like, I kind of get the gist of it, but I never really studied it. Never mind, don't answer that. I'll try and keep it simple for you. Hmm, let's see. I think the idea is like, um, it's based on like probability, like things in terms of like, uh, like chemistry, like electrons, uh, classical thought of like the atom, these electrons kind of like spin around the nucleus, like, uh, like planets spin around the sun. Um, and like the quantum theory is more like clouds like this is where the electrons could be the possibility that they could be in this area um so it's like more about probability hey hand me that box will you this one sure i handed the box i'd been examining over to her she set it down on the desk and opened the top also There's a stuffed lion over there. That is a creepy looking stuffed lion. Perfect. He's part of Felide too. Felide? With that, she grabbed the lion and tossed it unceremoniously into the box. She also took a weight and an ink jar and put them in next to the lion. All right, everything's ready. <laughs> Ready? Remember that book in the crew quarters about Schrodinger's cat? It relates to all this stuff I've been talking about. Anyway, come look at the box. What about looking for the- This will only take a minute. Now yeah, look. I mean, I need to find this bomb. Uh, I shrugged and peered into the box. What do you see? Well, there's a stuffed lion. From now on, that's a cat. A living cat. Oh, is she going to go over uh, Schrodinger's cat? This is important. Got it? Yeah, it's a cat. Meow. Oh, God. It's painful, but I love it. Oh, man. Yeah, five, five feels the pain. This again? Sorry. I find that I can't help to it. believe. Ugh, fine. Maybe I can just ignore it. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. Alright, what else do you see? A weight that's not even a pond. Oh, a pound. I got it. And a jar of ink. Right. 
Now the weight is going to be radioactive material, and the jar of ink is full of poisonous gas. Oh, what? I'm, I'm getting out of here. Idiot. It's not really full of gas. Oh, bye. This is just hypothetical. Imagine that it's full of gas. So, what's the weight? Radioactive material. And the jar of ink. It's full of poison gas. Exactly. Good work. We did it. Now, we nailed it. there's one other thing you need to know about the jar. If it's struck by any of the alpha particles the radioactive material emits, it'll break. These particles are emitted randomly, but there's a 50% chance that one of them will come into contact with the jar over the course of an hour. So let's close the lid. And pretend an hour has passed. Here's the question. Is the cat inside of the box alive or dead? You can't open the box to check. And you can't hit the box. Obviously, you can't shake it either. <laughs> it's also been soundproofed, so the cat could be howling up a storm in there and you'd never know. Well, the answer's obvious. The cat's dead because it was never alive. It's a stuffed animal, and it's a lion. Basically, you have no idea what's going on inside the box. Do you remember what happens if the alpha particles hit the jar? This music is, like, creeping me out. It breaks. Gas fills the box, the cat inhales it, and death will whisk her away. And what if the jar doesn't break? The cat lives to tell the tale. Ha ha. And what are the chances of either of those things happening? About 50 per cent. Uh-huh. So, what's your answer? Is the cat alive or dead? I can't possibly know. Then guess. It's not hard. Alive or dead? Um... It's alive. The cat is... Pause for dramatic effect. Alive! Nope. You're wrong. It's dead? She's gonna say no as well. That's wrong too. Then what's the right answer? The answer is that it's in a state where it is neither dead nor alive. What? How does that make any sense? It's an extrapolation of something we see at the atomic level. We don't know if an atom is spinning upward or downward until we measure it. Before it's measured, those two possibilities coexist. But as soon as the measurement is taken, obviously, only one possibility is the truth. That's what's happening with the alpha particles. Since we can't know when they were emitted or where, we only know the probability that they'll impact the jar. Because we can't observe anything that's happening in the box, that becomes the entire system. In other words, the box is like the atom. We don't know how the cat's life or death situation has resolved itself until we look at it. Until we do, it's just a bunch of possibilities. Do you get it? Yeah, I got it. If the cat in the box is possibilities, then it's both alive and dead. Right. So, let's open the lid. And when we do, all the possibilities will collapse into a single truth. Meow. So, as far as I think I explained this before, I think the Schrodinger's cat experiment was actually to kind of like. to demonstrate that, like, it's not really true. Like, it was in one of those states at all times when the box was closed, right? Like, it would have been dead or alive. It's just by observing it doesn't mean that it makes it in one particular state or another. Um, it would have been... If we opened the box right before we opened it, it would have been dead, right? If we saw that it was dead when we opened it. Likely. What a relief, huh? Looks like the cat's alive. Anyway, yeah, if it was alive, then for sure it would... Uh... Cat. So, like, if we open the box and we see that it's alive, we know for sure that it was alive the whole time, right? The many worlds interpretation is one theory for explaining that weirdness. That's kind of one of the uh, issues with that experiment is, like, it can't change states from dead to alive. It can't, once it dies, it can't come back to being alive. So there's another world out there where this cat died. Yeah, that's the idea.
Looks like that cat tick of yours cleared up. Yeah. Well, your story was pretty insane. Insane? I, I dig this 999 music. Okay. You don't think so? Just the idea of something being alive and dead at the same time. And if the moment the lid is opened determines whether or not the cat's dead, then... It's almost like events in the future can determine the past. Yeah. I mean, the cat doesn't die when you open the lid, so it must have already been dead. Exactly. You've experienced it, haven't you? What on earth are you talking about? Think back. Remember round two of the AB game? When you chose Betray, what was my vote? Ally. But what happened this time? I chose Ally and you chose Betray. Right. And both times, I put in my vote a full minute before the deadline. When did you push the button? Right before the deadline. I see. Well, that makes this a little easier to explain. If you chose Betray, then my vote was Ally. If you chose Ally, then my vote was Betray. But I made my choices a whole minute before you made yours. Don't you think that's strange? You do see what I'm saying, don't you? That my choice in the future altered your action in the past? Yeah. Okay. From your perspective, there's no other way to interpret it. Yeah, fair enough, but... Look at this die. I found it over there. Let me give you one last example. I feel like it's more like her memories of the previous time period made her, the way that they presented it, her memories of the previous vote made her decide to pick the opposite. It wasn't so much our choice in the future, it was our previous choice. But I guess what she's trying to say is that choice was made in the other universe in the future. So it's kind of like future events in the other universe, the parallel universe, affected her choice in the universe she was in in her like her past i don't know if i'm explaining that well if that's where she's trying to get to uh as she spoke she tossed the die into the box and quickly shut the lid all right answer this question what number is the die on uh i have no idea uh let's go six it's probably six okay i'm going to open the lid Good job. You got it right. I wonder if it's always right. That was just a fluke. Was it? Huh? Let's think about what was going on before I opened the lid. What number was the die on? I didn't even notice. Six, of course. Haven't you been paying attention? The die is still a collection of atoms, isn't it? Okay. I don't think you can reasonably suggest that it was made of some different kind of matter. Wait, so you're saying that before you open the lid, the die was on all the numbers? Uh-huh. That's one way to look at it, at least. And then, when you opened the lid, it was just one number. Or, it might have become that number when you declared which one it was. Huh? Wait, what do you mean? Your choice in the future has an effect on the past. That's... that's crazy. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. We got a little off topic there, but I think I made my point. I... I don't know. I, I The way that I explained it makes more sense to me than the idea that, like, in our current universe, my decision in the future affected the past. Because that's not the way that she presented it. She was like, she basically said, I chose Betray because you betrayed me in the other universe, like the previous time we voted. Reality separates off into an infinite number of branches for each and every possibility. You and I seem to be able to jump from branch to branch. Of course, our bodies aren't doing the jumping. Our consciousnesses just sort of 
dive into other versions of ourselves in other worlds. Whoa. I think I get it now. That's how you knew my name, right? You jumped in from another world. That's how you knew all those other things you shouldn't have known. Yeah, that's the best I can figure out, at least. Unfortunately, it seems like we don't retain all our memories when we jump. Maybe we only remember particularly important things. I'm not sure how it works. But whatever the reason, it seems to be fairly limited. And often, we don't seem to remember jumping at all. Things will just sort of pop up. That's why when someone asks us how we know X, all we can think of to say is, I, I just knew. Yeah. What's causing this then? I don't remember ever doing this before, so why would it start now? If we knew that, I don't think we'd be having so much trouble. It's just... Just what? Well, I'm pretty sure it has to do with why we're locked up in here. There's no way this doesn't have something to do with whatever Zero Senior's trying to do. Why would he have left that Schrodinger's cat book in the crew quarters? Hmm. You aren't kitten, are you? Maybe this is some sort of huge Schrodinger's cat experiment? And all nine of us are locked up inside the box right now? And what if you've got it backwards? Backwards? We're outside of the box. And the rest of the world is inside. Then the moment we step out of this place... Yeah. We might be determining the history of the world outside. Oh, that's pretty cool. We did, uh, we all, of course found that article about, um, that virus spreading. So... Is that what they're getting at? No way. I had a thousand other questions, but before I could open my mouth to ask them. Oh, good. There you are. Did something happen? Yes, we found it. Found what? What do you mean, what? What else could we find? The bomb. The bomb. The other antimatter bomb. The number two bomb is in the control room. Why is we didn't see it? Oh, is this it? Yeah. This is one of them, all right. And it's number two, apparently. Well, at least we found them all now. No, there could be more. Like Kay said, there might be a number four bomb out there. We have Maybe no there's one for each of us. Could be nine. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Did you tell anyone else about this, Clover? Well, um, not really, but, uh, I wasn't the first person to find it. Who was? Kay and Luna. After they found it, they came to the infirmary and told the rest of us. Who was in the infirmary? Everyone. Tenmyoji and Dio were there. So were Alice and Quark, of course. Although they were still asleep. So everyone who wasn't asleep knows about the bomb. I see. Yeah. There's nobody else here, though. Where'd they all go? Right after we came here to look at the bomb, they all left. They were going to go look for you two. What about Alice and Quark? They're the same. Still sleeping. We checked them out just to be sure, but they seemed fine. That's good. Fai and I looked at one another and let out a small sigh of relief. So why is it just the two of us that are experiencing this? Um, the one thing, like the connection that we kind of saw between us is that both of our names are, are letters of the Greek alphabet. Um, and I don't think anyone else's is, so... There's got to be some kind of like some kind of thing there like why are those our names what's our do we have some kind of connection in the past also like um thinking like junpei and uh akane is there some kind of like 
a connection in our childhood that we don't remember yet? Oh, right. I checked everybody's bracelets when we were in the infirmary. Did you want to know what they were? Oh, yes, I do want to know what they are. It took her only a moment to explain. Okay. Um, Alice was a green solo. And Quark was a blue solo. Dio's bracelet made him a yellow pair. And Temioji was a cyan pair. So, what are our options for groups? The next set of doors to open are going to be the white doors. That means we'll have to mix our colors so that we get white. If I laid out what would uh, what that would mean. Option A. Fai and Temyoji Cyan would pair with me, red. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think. We, um, Luna and I both lost two points, right? So Luna's at three and we're at four then everyone else gained two points aside from um Fi, who's at nine right so alice is three quark is eight or sorry seven dio seven uh tembioji's three k is eight clover's eight we might want to we want to consider that when we're deciding. So Phi and Temioji. Uh we want to go with them. We're gonna be up against them. I don't know. K and Dio Yellow uh would pair with Quark, blue. Clover and Luna, Magenta, would pair with Alice, green. I kinda wanna get I want to go someplace with K because I'm most curious about him. Huh? There's only one option? Oh, there's only one option. Yeah. Any other combinations don't make white. Forget about that! What about Alice and Clark? Luna said it's going to be a while until they wake up. We'll just have to carry them. The secondary doors won't open without three bracelets. And if we can't open them... Yeah, we'll get penalized. We can just cut their arms off. Exactly. I'm just kidding. Don't worry about Alice. I'm on her team. Are you saying you can carry her? Yeah. Are you sure, Clover? You're pretty small. Well, I can get Luna to help me. Okay, there we go. True. I'm sure she'd be happy to help. What about Cork? He's on Kay's team. K should be able to carry him. There shouldn't be any issues there. What are we gonna do with these bombs? So I need to figure out what we're gonna do. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Alice said we should be safe as long as it's not triggered with the remote. Maybe, but we can't just leave them here forever. I mean, if they go off, then everything in like. A couple hundred kilometers is gonna get fried. Wait. A couple hundred kilometers? What are you talking about? That bomb should only have about as much explosive power as a ton of TNT. Which is nothing to sniff at, but that's nowhere near the kind of yield you're talking about. It could be. What if these bombs are just, like, the detonator? Oh, oh! You mean there might be a bunch more anti-hydrogen around here somewhere? What about the reactor right next to you, man? Yep, right over there. The reactor. Yeah, there is supposed to only be 18 antimatter reactors in the whole world. If that's one of them, then there's a lot of anti-hydrogen. How much is a lot? Three and a half kilograms. Three and a half? That's like 10,000 times more than Alice's 350 milligrams. If there really is that much, 
And if it does explode... Then we would be looking at an explosion roughly 10,000 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. No. That's... That's insane! Wait. Clover, how did you know that? Know what? That stuff about antimatter reactors. Um, well, that's a... Uh, during my training, they... What about this training? Training for what? Uh, my job? I thought she was like a waitress or something. Uh, of course, I, I didn't realize waiters these days needed to memorize how many operational antimatter reactors there were worldwide. Nice one, Sigma. Or how much fuel each one of uh, those reactors might be storing. You don't work at a cafe, do you? Did you hear about that from Alice? Yeah. Oh. Well, um, she's right then. And why are you using antimatter reactors at a cafe? That's, uh, what we call the coffee machines. What? Are you fucking with me? I'm telling you the truth. I work at a cafe. It just might, um, be a kind of fake job to divert attention. I think they call it a cover. What? Then what's your real job? I'm sorry. I really can't tell you anything else. Why not? It's classified. <laughs> Nothing's classified in this situation, Clover. Why are you dressed like that, too? I guess that's how they dress in the cafe. I don't know. That's why by who? The government? The government? That's right. Alice said it was her job to eliminate enemies of the state or something. So you two do work together. Uh, oh no! Check your bracelets! How much time do we have left? What are you talking about? How long until the doors open? Come on, quickly! Good God. Oh, is that 55 minutes? Or is that 55 seconds? Damn. We were supposed to have met up five minutes ago. Okay, it's just five minutes. I'm heading back then. Remember, we're supposed to meet at the infirmary. You guys hurry back, okay? Bye! And I hope you guys hurry back for the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. This is Luckless Lovelock signing off for now, and I love you all.